Part 2. Free Will Suppose I told you that the other day while walking I bumped into a unicorn and talked to me. You would not believe me, of course, and you would have good reason to doubt me. After all, it is a matter of common knowledge that unicorns do not exist and that they are creatures of the imagination. There is no trustworthy evidence for unicorns because they are supposed to be animals and yet are not recorded in any scientific literature. They have never been any unicorn bones found or unicorns filmed, etc. But suppose I was very insistent and even dragged you along with me while I took a lie detector test with truth serum to boot, a test which I passed. Well, you can't just toss out your general knowledge, which includes my being, which includes my being a very honest person who could be, who couldn't be a lie detector test, and which almost certainly precludes the existence of unicorns. Suppose also that you can rule out optical illusion or a practical joke. You will then know three things about my encounter. One, that there are no unicorns. Two, that I believe I saw a unicorn. And three, that I'm an honest person. You are forced to conclude, regrettably, that I was under a delusion or that I hallucinated. If I continue seeing unicorns, you will be forced to conclude that I am delusional. Now imagine a different scenario. Suppose I told you that the other day, while walking, I bumped into a two-sided cube. What, you exclaim? A two-sided cube? What on earth is that? I am puzzled at your response and repeat myself slowly. Okay, I was taking a stroll through the woods when all of a sudden I banged my knee against a large cube. Curious, I picked it up and was surprised to discover that this cube had only two sides, not the regular six. Pretty strange, huh? But you still don't get it and begin glaring at me and shaking your head. Be more specific, you demand. What did it look like? Describe it to me. I roll my eyes at you. It was a cube, you know, the shape of a Rubik's Cube, only instead of having six equal surfaces, it had only two. I don't believe you. That's ridiculous, you exclaim. I'll take a lie detector test, I reply, with true serum. I'll even go under hypnosis. You have known me long enough to know that I'm an honest person, and that I could not pass a lie detector test unless I were telling the truth. However, in this case, a lie detector test is not necessary. You know that I didn't see or touch a two-sided cube, because it is that is the kind of thing which simply cannot be. A cube, by virtue of what it is, cannot have only two sides. But that is not even the real problem. A two-sided cube cannot even be conceptualized. It doesn't exist. It cannot exist under any possible circumstances in any possible world. I can have a false belief that I saw a unicorn because my mind can extract from the world various real qualities and forms, horses, horns, etc., and arrange them together in the phantasm of a unicorn. But my mind cannot even have an image or idea of, or a, a concept of a cube with only two sides. What I say when I, when I claim to have encountered a two-sided cube is something that simply cannot be. It's a non-thing, a metaphysical absurdity. It's not even possible to hallucinate a two-sided cube because it's impossible by definition, given the definition of a cube. Keep this thought experiment in mind as we proceed. First of all, I want to remind you that the fact of determinism, or free will as the case may be, is distinct from an explanation of that fact. I don't have to know how the pyramids were built to know that they were built or even to have a practical certainty that they were built by people as opposed to, say, extraterrestrials, even if I'm not sure exactly what the method was. I might forever remain in ignorance as to the method, but any hypothetical explanation I put forward must at least be feasible and not inherently absurd. Such is the case with determinism. With that, we turn to the experience of free will. We, each of us, under ordinary circumstances, barring extraordinary situations like addiction and bad habits, have a sense of both the power to choose among various possible alternative actions and the experience of actually choosing. We feel responsible for our good choices and if we apply the scale evenly, responsible and thus guilty for bad choices. We praise others for a hard struggle against the odds and against their own fears, doubts, etc. towards some lofty but difficult goal. We sometimes make ourselves do what we believe we ought to do rather than what feels easier or what we are naturally inclined towards. We choose to get up in the morning even when our bodies want to sleep, for example, or we choose to give in to our fatigue and regret it later, knowing we could have done otherwise. But according to determinism, all of this is ultimately an elaborate delusion. When we choose, we are merely actualizing whatever it is that we had to do and would have done again were the tape of existence played over. We have the sense of freedom and struggle against external and internal coercion, and we have emotions that accompany success and failure in this struggle. But ultimately, we're kidding. To quote McGinn again, Freedom is not possible in any kind of possible world. Or to put it another way, given causality, it follows axiomatically that no one can be free to act in a way contrary than how we act to how he acted. But since we think we're free, we must address the sense of freedom. Let's look at those possible explanations from the last video. If you don't remember what they are, go and watch the relevant portions of the last video. 
1. The illusion of free wills and evolutionary adaptation. It seems to me that this is a bad explanation for at least the following reasons. Nothing that we observe in the entire system of nature, from corks up to chimpanzees, seems to bet possess what it is that we possess when we speak of freedom to choose, nor does it seem to possess a personal illusion of such freedom. What's more, I am suspicious, as I'm sure you are, of any explanation that always comes in after the fact. Evolution preserves useful mutations in organisms. The sense of freedom, we happen to know, is useful. Therefore, evolution produced it. But wait, that's not an explanation. It's about as informative as saying, a wizard did it. Of course, I know that the sense of free will is useful and that evolution preserves useful things, but that hardly explains how the sense of freedom emerged from a system of causal determinism, and the observation that evolution preserves useful changes doesn't get me one inch closer to an actual explanation of this fact. I'm not disputing that man evolved, simply pointing out that the repetition of this fact gives us no real insight into how it happened, nor does it explain why we have a sense of conscious freedom. This brings me to the second claim. 2. Perhaps we think that we're free because we just don't have all the available information. In other words, we're ignorant of our being coerced. When I, when I choose action X, it seems to me that X is one course of action among many, but in reality, X is the only course I'd ever have taken, given the existing state of affairs in my mind and the universe as a whole. But wait, how is this an explanation of the sense of freedom? Suppose I think I can do X and Y, but I only can do X, so that's what I do. What could account for my sense of being able to do something other than X, except the ability to see the possibility of Y? But if I can see the possibility of Y, and I can act, why can't I act on the possibility of Y? Put another way, when I am ignorant of, it, of a thing, I just don't know about it. If I choose to make a sandwich, and I know of no other way to make a sandwich but with peanut butter and jelly, then I must make a PBJ. But if I am also conscious of how to make the roast beef sandwich, and have the available materials, then I am at least conscious of both possibilities. It would seem then that I could act on both possibilities. But supposing for some reason that I had to make a PBJ, PBJ anyway, even while knowing how to make the other and having the capacity to do so, then this is not a case of ignorance of why, but some other scenario entirely. Or if it is ignorance, it is a very bizarre form of ignorance. Whenever I am ignorant of anything, I just don't know it, period. But how can I be conscious of possibilities X, Y, Z, A, B, C, etc., able to do them in the sense of having the physical or mental capacity to do them, and yet forced to do only one? But these are just interesting questions. Let us now turn to what I think is the fatal flaw of determinism. It admits the sense of freedom, but claims it's an illusion. Having done this, it's already dead in the water. Why? Think back to our thought experiment at the beginning of this video. For whatever reason, it is possible to have a delusion of a unicorn, elf, dragon, or extraterrestrial. Presumably, a person can have a false experience of lying on the beach when he is really comatose near the top of Mount Everest. I can have dreams of the strangest possible things, such as drinking a potion and shrinking to the size of a thimble, but I cannot really think or dream impossible things. That is to say, anything I dream or think of must be derived either from the a priori world of reason or the a posteriori world of experience, and must be some arrangement or combination or implication thereof. A unicorn is a, a horse plus a horn, and both exist. A dragon is reptilian, avian, um, fiery, etc. 1 plus 1 equals 2, so it follows that 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3, etc. Physical things have extension in space, and they differ in mass, so it is possible to imagine one thing growing smaller or bigger. But I am con confident in saying that it is not possible to have, as the object of thought or perception, anything which is ontologically impossible full stop. I may have beliefs which are absurd inasmuch as they entail absurd conclusions, and I can hold beliefs that are empirically false. But I cannot have an experience of that which is, by definition, logically or metaphysically impossible. That is to say, impossible in any possible world. If a madman thinks he's a butterfly, he presumably imposes his sensory impression of the butterfly on himself, or vice versa. But he cannot think he is a butterfly and is not a butterfly in the same, at the same time in the same sense. All of my experiences and beliefs, whether or not they obtain in reality, are derived in some sense from some thing or principle that actually obtains in some mode in reality. But if determinism is correct, freedom does not obtain in reality in any sense. Nothing is free because freedom itself is metaphysically impossible. That is why McGinn says that it is impossible in any possible world, not just our particular universe. Determinism is a metaphysical claim about, a world, about the world, not an empirical claim. There might be another universe somewhere with entirely different physical laws and different creatures, 
a race of intelligent reptilian jabberwockies who floated through the air on inner tubes. But whatever the qualities this world has, it cannot have freedom according to the logic of the argument. But if it cannot have freedom, neither can it have the delusion of freedom. If causality rules out freedom as metaphysically absurd, then it also rules out the false experience of freedom, for there would be no content for this false experience to draw upon if freedom were not at least a mental possibility. But it cannot be even that under determinism. We shouldn't be able to think about freedom, let alone to experience it and to talk about it or to have a delusion of having encountered it, if freedom is impossible per se. Just as one cannot think of a cube with only two sides, one cannot think of freedom or, a, or have an experience of it. But we can and do have such ex an experience. Ironically, then, even an illusion of freedom, even, un even the sense of freedom, disproves the determinist thesis that there is no freedom in any possible world. If something is conceptually possible, it must be metaphysically possible. 